In this video, we are going to use the Intersection Observer API to make something like this, where the user scrolls and the sidebar dynamically changes to the active section. So the example you just saw was built using the Intersection Observer API. This API simply provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with an ancestor element. All this is saying is when an element comes into view, do something. In the case of the demo, when a section came into view, make that header active in the sidebar. Some of the other things we can do with it are lazy loading for images, or we can make an infinite scrolling website. You can read more on what this is on the docs, but let's jump right into it and actually build this. So I am inside of index.js. This is a fresh Next.js project, and I added a, a bit of code inside of here. This will work for any website, uh, but if you are using a React-based framework, it will work best. That is because we are using useState and useEffect, but it will be similar for whatever framework you are using. The first thing we have here is an array of headers, and I just have some random headers in here. And then we have an array of background colors, which again is just random background colors that correspond to each header. Next, I have a useState variable active header with a method to set the active header here. And initially, we're going to set that to the first element of the array, in our case, intro. Here is where we will define the intersection observer. And we are calling that inside of a use effect hook. Now, before we actually create this function, let me go ahead and show you guys the HTML. Everything is wrapped in this main tag. We have two columns, a div on the left, and a sidebar on the right using the semantic HTML aside tag. As you can see, we are mapping through each of the headers and displaying them as a section on the screen with a height of 80 view height. And the background color is coming from the array, as you can see here. And then in the sidebar, we are also mapping over the headers. And the important thing to note here is that we are setting the font weight to bold if the active header is equal to uh, the header. And again, this active header is being set in the function that we have yet to create. And you can ignore the rest of the inline styles as they are arbitrary. So the first thing that we want to do is to find some options. We can say let options. Inside of here, there are three options that we have. The first is the root, which we are going to set to null. And if I go back here to the doc, I can see that the root is the element that is used as the viewport for checking visibility of the target. So in my case, I'm setting it to null because I want the viewport to be the entire screen. However, if you want to check for visibility inside of a box, for example, like a div, you could use the ID of that div. The next, as you can see, is the root margin. For us, we're going to set that to zero pixels. Again, going back to the docs, you can see that the root margin is simply the margin around the root. The default is actually zero, but we can set that as well, just so you can see it here. Next is the threshold. We're going to set the threshold to 1.0. All this means is that we want 100% of the object to be visible. You can see if you want 50% of the object to be visible, you can use 0.5. And this is not applicable to us, but you can also use an array and it will activate when each of these percentages are visible. So it will fire when nothing is visible, when 25% is visible, and so on. But for us, that doesn't do anything because all we want to know is when the entire thing is visible so we could set it as active in our sidebar. So those are the options. Next, we need to define the targets. And these are what we're going to be watching for. Let's say const targets. We can first say document dot get element by ID main dash content. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we only want to get everything inside of this main content div. So everything inside of here. 
And what we're going to search for more specifically is the sections dot query selector all section. So grab all of these section HTML tags inside of main content. So that's all we have for defining the targets. Next, we need to define the observer. We can say const active observer pass in our target because we are going to run this as you'll see for each of the targets. And we can use some error notation just like that. And inside of here, we are going to say const header observer, because that's what we're observing, the headers, equals new. And then we have the intersection observer. This takes the entries and the observer. And at the end here, we want to pass in the options. Inside of here, we can say entries dot for each. And for each of the entries, we want to do stuff with it. First, let's log out the entries, just so we can see what we are looping over here. And before we can see anything being printed out here, what we need to do is below the options, we need to actually invoke this header observer. And if I do a dot here, you can see we have a couple of options. The one we want is observe. And we're going to pass in the target. And then the final step is to loop through all of the targets. So below here, we're going to say targets dot for each. And what we want to pass in is actually this uh, right here, but I just realized I misnamed that. We actually want to call this active header and pass that in there. So we're saying for each of the targets, loop through invoking this method, which will then call the header observer and check if it's intersecting. So that's happening inside of here, but we can check if this is working by going into the console and making sure we are seeing that being logged. All right, there we go. So if I look into the console, I can see all of these console.logs here. And if I open it up, each one corresponds to each section. And by using the intersection observer entry, we get a bunch of different info. The one we're going to want to use is the is intersecting. And as you can see here, this is set to true. And this is the section with ID intro. So this one here, which it is indeed intersecting. If we go to the second one, we can see that it is not intersecting. This is the second section, the random header. And all three of these will also not be intersecting. So this is working well. So you can see what we're probably going to do next. We're going to simply check, is it intersecting? If it is, set the active header to that attribute and then quit. So let's do that. We'll say if entering dot is intersecting, we're going to set the active header and we want to set that to the ID of the section, which if you recall earlier, I said it was important that we add the ID property right here. And that's because we need it right up here. When we set the active header, we're going to set it to entry that target dot get attribute in the attribute we want is the ID. And then we can call observer dot disconnect. So now it should work. So if we go back here, as we scroll, you can see it is firing. Right now, intro is the active header. We see the active header switch to random header. And if we scroll more, another one, when it comes in, boom, it switches. And remember, it is 100% because we set the option here, the threshold, to be 1.0. So we need 100% of the object to be visible. So that's how you use the Intersection Observer API with a quick basic example.